Hello my dear friends, I am Roshni and uh, you all are welcome to our channel Best Notes Tutorials. In this class, I will be teaching you all My Last Touches. This is a poetry which is written by Robert Browning, American poet. So let's see few details about the poet at first and then we will move towards line wise explanation of the poetry my last duchess so let's begin robert browning was born on 7th may 18 in camberwell near london he had little of formal education but learned a great deal in his father's substantial library which had notable works on history, biography, and anecdote. So, friends, here it's said that where there is a will, there is a way. In the same way, Robert Browning got education. He was very much inclined towards reading. Therefore, he went to father's library and then he started studying different genres, and which made him a renowned personality throughout the world. He was deeply influenced by his vast reading. By 17, he had decided to take up poetry as his career. He was also greatly influenced by Shelley's idea. So, here he is talking about P.B. Shelley, who belonged to Romantic period, later Romantic period. He was interested in studying music and paintings. So, overall, when we see his nature and inclination, we find that he was a true romantic who had deviation towards nature and poetry. In 1838, he sailed for Triste en route for Venice on his first visit to Italy, which he learned to love so much. In 1844, Browning noticed a compliment to himself in a, in a poem by Elizabeth Barrett who was a poetess of delicate health. So here, Elizabeth Barrett's words or poetry touched Robert Browning and eventually they were together but they did it secretly because father was not agree to have Robert Browning as his son-in-law. Elizabeth's health improved a great deal when they left England and settled in Florence in Italy. He died on December 12, 1889 in Venice and was buried in Westminster Abbey. So here we understand brief idea about Robert Browning's journey. So by this we learn that he was inclined towards nature. He wanted to write more on nature and in this time period, he has written a lot, many poetries. I am going to show you the list also. Here are they. Poems are shown out here. You all can go through one by one if you get access to it. Apart from that, he has written plays as well. And this last one, Agamemnon by Achilles. This is a translation work which we find in CBSE's. It's mention, okay, slight mention is there in CBSE's class 11th topic also which is the browning version okay the browning version that means the translation of agamemnon of achilles by robert browning so all these are plays which we have got from robert browning now let's move towards the last duchess friends before we move into the stories friends before we move into the line wise explanation of the poetry let me tell you about the summary of this poem. So here, as you all can see, it talks about my last duchess. My, here, duke or the king is the speaker. Okay, duke means king and duchess means queen. Okay, duchess means queen. So my last duchess, my last queen. Something is there about duchess who is last of this duke okay all right so here we find duke who is very selfish who is very tyrannical and very much 
ruled. He is ruling a province called Ferrara. This Ferrara is in Italy and the time period which is highlighted in the poetry is Renaissance. Renaissance started in Italy that um, to be more precise it is started in Rome and from Rome it is spread to different parts of the world. So that was the time when ideas bloomed like anything new ideas it was a phase of enlightenment new things dawned upon people and new things were created okay so here and that was the period when art and culture was given utter importance so duke had given importance to art and this is related to a painting of his wife his wife that is duchess is already dead and when she was alive, her portrait was created. Portrait was painted by a famous painter. And then after the death of Duchess, there were other people who were interested in this king. They wanted this duke to get married. So when convoy or representative of girl's family came to duke's palace they asked duke to accept the proposal of marriage at that time duke praises the painting of his last duchess so what all he talks about here let's find out and let's see whether his love for duchess was genuine or it was fake and superficial so entire poetry talks about duchess who is not good for the king but through his words, we understand the good nature, the generous nature of Duchess. So how he brings out masterpiece out of this poetry, let's see. So friends, let's start with the line-wise explanation of the poetry. My last Duchess. My last Duchess. Duchess means a queen. Queen. And Duke. Duke is king. Okay, queen and king. So here we are going to read about the last duchess. That means the last queen. Ferrara. Ferrara is a city in Italy. And it is well known for its culture during the Renaissance period. Okay, this is a place in Italy. And we have already read in history and in literature also what is Renaissance. Okay, rebirth or rejuvenation of new culture and idea and it started from italy okay so we are going to read the story from ferrara now here that's my last duchess painted on the wall that's my last duchess that's my last queen painted on the wall he here the speaker is duke himself the husband of duchess that is duke and this duke rules over the country over the province ferrara i told you it is in italy and here he has painted his duchess image on the wall looking as if she were alive i call that piece a wonder now fra pandolf's hands worked busily a day and there she stands now here the wall painting looks as if duchess or the queen is alive it is painted in a, such a intricate manner taking care of each and every details the painting was painted by the painter fra pandolf okay fra pandolf here fra means it is a shortened form of Friar, F R I A R, Friar, which means monk. Okay, which means monk. And monk, monks are the one who do the worship in monasteries. And some of the monks, they roam around also. Okay, so this task was given to this monk, and this is imaginary. Okay, we don't find any trace of this artist in this area, that is Ferrara, Italy. 
therefore it is an imaginary artist which we find in the story so here we need to understand that the painting was made by a monk his name was pandov and another important thing is that he considers this piece okay the painting of duchess as a piece it means he is so materialistic he gives importance to non living objects than the real one that means his wife duchess this painting was made within a day within one single day busily a day okay this pandov artist fra pandov has painted duchess image within one day okay and it was the instruction of duke to do it because he did not want his wife to be seen continuously by some outsider for a longer period so he was given instruction and he followed it and the artist followed it with it pleased you sit and look at her i said fra pandov by design for never read strangers like you that pictured countenance the depth and passion of its earnest glance now here readers see here readers we need to understand here that the duke of ferrara is a widower his wife is already dead and another party another envoy another envoy has come to you know see duke so that he will get married and uh, this time it was some other people envoy means representative of some country or area they wanted duke of ferrara to negotiate a marriage between them okay because this envoy's daughter had to be given married to duke of ferrara because he is a widow were now all right so he shows the messenger his picture gallery duke shows these envoyers or representatives his picture gallery where he draws attention to the portrait of last duchess here he shows that this is the portrait of my last duchess and this is painted by fra pandolf and this painting it's so realistic and it has vitality just like a human live human being the duke proudly tells the messenger that it is a wonderful work of art painted by the famous painter i told you the artist's hands worked merely for a day within just a day a marvelous picture of the duchess was ready at the same time the duke calls upon the envoy to sit and admire the work of art leisurely they have come to negotiate marriage between duke and their daughter okay because duke's earlier wife is already dead but duke is interested in showing them his possession he is happily showing that what he has he is not remorseful that his wife is dead and uh, people are coming for new and relationship uh, which he had to make but he is concerned about the artistic piece which he has possessed at that time so in the picture we find the duchess who has deep and passionate earnest glance that means eyes okay the eyes of the painting are so passionate these are so deep and these are so sincere as well let's begin with the line wise explanation of the poetry now so here ferrara is a place in italy where the duke where the king rules and here duke is talking about his wife who is no more duchess means queen and she is already dead now after the marriage sorry after the death of queen other kings are interested in giving their daughters hands in the hand of duke 
who is a widower now okay who is a widower now so those kings have sent their representative they are called envoy in the poetry okay so this convoy uh, sorry envoy has come to ask for duke for the marriage and now duke is talking about his wife here in these lines all right so i hope background is more clear so i will move towards the line wise explanation now that's my last duchess painted on the wall duke or the king is talking about his queen he is he has asked a painter to paint duchess image on the wall and looking as if she were alive it is made with meticulous intricate details because of which it seems alive it's not a painting but it's alive it is made so perfectly i call that piece a wonder now fra pandolf's hands worked busily a day so the painter is fra pandolf now here fra fra word has come from friar f r i a r friar friar means monk okay so a monk has painted the image excuse me painted the image of duchess on the wall so fra pandolf is the painter and when did he ready this painting he within how much hours he has ready the painting so the answer is within a day it is because duke did not want duchess to be seen by anyone else for a longer period so it was not but remember it was not his love but his possession okay he did not love duke he did not love duchess but he treated her like a possession so facilities were given but she had to obey the orders of duke and here duchess had to be in front of an artist not for a longer period but just for a day to get her painted ready by this artist and there she stands so after the hard work of fra pandolf within a day the painting of duchess stands will please you sit and look at her i ask fra pandolf by design for never read strangers like you that pictured countenance here one thing we must notice out here that duke proudly tells the messenger messengers are those envoy okay those envoy who has got the message of count of the count to get their daughter married with this duke okay so duke is asking envoy to look at this painting and admire he is very much proud about his possession and the artist hand work merely for a day within a day it was readied now duke says uh, duke's possessive nature is indicated here because he considers his wife as a property and not his family member okay so here this these are the things which we need to understand next in this line he is asking envoy to sit and look at the painting here the duke says that this was intentional because of his intention the painting was made and the strangers like envoy show deep interest in the pictured countenance pictured countenance it means the face of the duchess in the picture and it has depth it has passion and 
earnest glance it requires earnest glance to understand the picture according to the king so he praises his duchess painting and not the duchess herself because duchess projected in a negative way which is not true he talks about duchess and according to duke duchess was was not was not fit for him but even though in order to show it to the world that how much he loved his queen he did that he had the painting made let's move ahead but to myself they turned since none puts by the curtain i have drawn for you but i so here duke opens the curtain of the painting himself and he says that everybody who looks at the painting of the duchess has so many questions in their eyes but they are not able to ask and seemed as they would ask me if they durst see they did not dare to ask how how such a profound and passionate look came to be in duchess eyes they wanted to ask this question to king but nobody dared and duke also understood that everybody looking at this painting has the same question in their mind how such a glance came there so not the first are you to turn and ask thus sir it was not her husband's presence only called that a spot of joy into the duchess chick perhaps so see he says that duke projects her as his property and therefore he did not want anybody to look at his duchess therefore within one day he had to meet it and within that one day also the painting was awesome it was meticulously made therefore we find deep realistic eyes of duchess which shows compassion which shows love for the countryman and the eyes were drawn in such a way that it showed her inner character as well there is another point to be noticed that why a monk had to paint duchess painting and why not a normal artist it is because monks they are religious in nature therefore the king wanted to have no affair of anybody with his wife that is duchess that is why he had engaged a monk so that he won't be inclined towards having any affair with the duchess because if he will look at wife continuously even though for making painting then it is not tolerable for the duke how such a glance came there so not the first are you to turn and ask thus so it was not her husband's presence only called the spot of joy into duchess chick perhaps so here the duke of ferrara is explaining to the envoy about the blush of joy in the duchess chick in the painting actually it was not caused by the presence of a husband the poet says but it caused because of so many trivial things and those trivial things are mentioned in the poetry at the same time we need to understand that it was the mastery of the artist and not the love of duke which made her blush and which made her eyes have depth fra pandolf chance to say her mantle laps over my lady's wrist too much or paint must never hope to reproduce the faint half flush that die along the throat such stuff was courtesy she thought and cause enough for calling up that the spot of joy she had a heart how shall i say 
too soon she glad too soon made glad too easily impressed she liked whatever she looked on and her looks were everywhere so friends uh, here the duke of ferrara is uh, explaining to the convoy envoy sorry about the blush of joy in the duchess eyes duchess cheeks especially in the painting it was not he says uh, caused by the presence of a husband i told you um so it could have been caused by any different things that happened in her day to day life somebody praised her and she became happy somebody's smile made her happy somebody gave things which were grown in the um field and she became happy so her happiness was related to very trivial thing she did not require huge lofty things to smile and show happiness so here another thing we need to notice is that the cloak was covering the mantle means cloak this mantle is cloak okay or the dress the dress was covering too great part of her wrist suggesting thereby that her beauty was hidden here we need to understand that the duke says she had a heart how shall i say too soon made glad so duchess had a heart which is a plus point good sign and this heart became happy at very trivial things at very simple things and very soon she was glad and she spread happiness so friends here we understand the lines which are mentioned here indicate the temperament of duke and the duchess the duchess was very innocent she was childlike and she appreciated every little acts of courtesy courtesy means manners mannerism which a royal people bear but it doesn't mean that she was faking she was showing artificial dignity no she had genuine one even though she was not from royal family she bore humanness she bore the qualities of humanness so here duke is the person who has no sense of dignity but duchess has and here when duke speaks we get to understand that how much a uh, problem he had with the duchess according to him she was not royal by standards by mannerism and he did a favor by you know marrying duchess so both of them have different mindsets because of which there is no match between duchess and duke duchess is a kind hearted genuine lady and not the duke duke is bearing artificial character so to us all one my favor at her breast the dropping of the daylight in the west the bow of cherries some officious fool broken sorry broke in the orchard for her the white mule she rode with round the terrace all and each would draw from her i like the approving speech see here for duchess everything was equal to us all one that means there was no discrimination from her side be it royal thing and be it thing which were offered or which she saw in front of her all had equal value then here let's talk about sunset then the trees an of officious fool it means offering unwanted services okay so everybody had equal values and they were not discriminated by duchess she never discriminated that this is from low caste people poor people so she will not accept everything she accepted and she was happy on that she rode on mule she rode on mule it was not chariot where she which she used to travel 
she used mule and she was happy she used a white horse and she was happy not only that she loved things which were offered to her she blushed when she found happiness in all these trivial things like tree which represents nature sunset which represents nature and instead of chariot she is using mule so she is happy by the things which she is accessible to she does not have any high five desire so here we find duchess to be a simple lady with which duke has problem according to duke she uh, she did not have any dignity she did not have dignity of royal being not only that he says she was too easily impressed and uh, moved by trivial things the duke tries to find the best words out here to express her contemptuous feeling for her lack of discrimination but we know that this is a good sign from duchess side she was interested in and liked everything she saw she could not distinguish a thing of worth from some triviality she had no taste for property see everything thrilled and pleased her so much so that she seemed to hold the duke's gift the gift which is given by the king that is ornament which is hanging on her chest even that has same value just like sun just like tree just like mule etc and there lies the problem somehow i know not how as if she ranked my gift of 900 years old name with anybody's gift who would stoop to blame this is short of trifling this short of trifling even had you skill in a speech which i have not to make you will so here he is very proud the duke is very proud that he has given 900 years old name and see renaissance period people had adamant nature towards their name family and fame so he is so proud that he has given his name to duchess okay he is not happy with the way she treats her husband's gift that is a necklace so when she is given equal importance to the necklace to the sun moon everything then the duke becomes very much infurious and according to a king being a king he has problem with that but we know that this is the qualities we require in a man or a human being let's move ahead duke further says that there was no problem in thanking people but the way duchess thanked them like wholeheartedly she thanked people for gifts that they showered upon her so duke had problem with that because 900 year old name had no importance for her and duke exaggerated this name fame and position which he had given to the queen when he said so we find duke to be very egoistic and his pride is reflected here he is too much proud of his old family name he is conscious of having done his wife a great favor by marrying her for such for which she ought to feel specially gratified which she did not let's see the last two lines more uh, precisely this sort of trifling even had you skill in a speech which i have not to make you will so here the duke lacks a skill in his speech to make a person like uh, his wife to understand what he wanted 
she was too childish to realize what displeased him so here duke is unhappy with his wife who has human qualities who loves everybody who never discriminates between rich and poor who does not give more importance to name family ornaments and fame and here she has skill of speaking but not duke duke is not able to convince his wife his duchess what is right for a royal entity and what is wrong according to this duke she is very childish and she accepts everybody's gift and she is avoiding his avoiding her husband which is not right let's move ahead quite clear to such an one and say just this or that in you disgusts me here you miss or there exceed the mark and if she let herself be less and so not not plainly said her wits to yours forsooth and made excuse even then would be some stooping and i chose never to stoop oh sir she smiled no doubt whenever i passed her but who passed without much the same smile this crew i gave commands then all smiles stopped together then she stands there she stands so here friends such an one this means such an one this means such a childish and frivolous person as a duchess according to duke she was a very trivial and frivolous person not important one where she fell short on the standards and uh, decorous behavior she is trivial because she accepts everyone and she does not have high opinion about duke and um, he thought of teaching her and correcting manners which she did not listen and it began arguing and expressing her own opinion against his it means duke had tried to convince duchess but it did not help she did what was right for her and we know that it was duke who is to be blamed and not duchess because she was a genuine lady that is why she did not discriminate upon uh, anyone at last he chose at last we find tone of uncompromising arrogance he is not going to compromise with duchess next point that we see out here is that the duke of ferrara is describing uh, his late wife to the envoy of the count we have already said that and the duchess had a frank and easy disposition which the duke thought was not appropriate to the higher status of being his wife but he considered it to be beneath his dignity to criticize and correct the duchess so foolish behavior of showing such uh, grat for went gratitude to all the sunray or all the individual is the problem of the duke moreover says the duke the lacked skill in speech to make a person like his wife understand what he wants she was too childish to realize what displeased him the king never chose to stoop never chose to descend or never chose never chose to incline before anyone and he did not receive he did not receive poor people wholeheartedly with a smile without any doubt whenever he passed he un- he tried to think that why my commands are not being accepted by my wife why can't she be like me why can't she be like royal lady why she has to accept gifts from these people 
who are poor and indignant according to him they were indignant people so he smiles then all his smiles is stopped altogether here the king stops smiling there was something what was that let's see there she stands finally after the death of duke wife she stands in the painting here whenever i passed her but who passed without much the same smile it means duke when she when he looked at duchess she smiled and it was not only for the duke but it was for everyone whoever crossed the duchess she smiled at those people so there was no difference between the smile for a king and a smile for a commoners there lies the problem so all his smiles stopped altogether all the smile of duke stopped altogether and therefore she stands that means therefore she is there in the painting because um, the duchess did not listen to the king that is why she, he gave command to people which stopped the smile of people altogether as if alive will it please you rise we will meet the company below then i repeat the count your masters known munificence is ample warrant that no just pretence of mine for dowry will be disallowed though his fair daughter's self as i avowed at starting is my object nay we will go together down sir notice neptune though timing a sea horse though a rarity which cause of inbrook cast in bronze for me so here the duke now talks about uh, his intense marriage so here the duke is talking about his intended marriage to the count's daughter the for which envoy had come he tells the envoy that uh, he is well aware of his master the count's reputation of generosity okay munificence means generosity and uh, liberality the duke considers the count's known generosity as a sufficient guarantee that he would be getting a large dowry to set, satisfy his legitimate expectation legitimate expectation so here he says that the count who has come the envoy of count who has come to meet him he is a generous person that is why without asking he should get a lot of dowry from this new girl indirectly he is promoting dowry system and he is not bothered about the reputation much of this daughter's father but his money because of which because of which he will be getting money for his treasure as well the duke adds uh, with cunning tact that his primary concern is of course the beautiful daughter of the count as he uh, had said at the time at the very outset the word repeat in the line out here says signifies that the duke had already mentioned the matter to the envoy it indicates that the poem has caught the speaker at a significant point of life but in that moment it's essential of a whole life history the duke of duke of ferrara is inhumanly proud and dignified he is also greedy and uh, materialistic as well which shows materialism of renaissance his cunning diplomacy is revealed in his flattery of the count and his friar and his fair daughter the cleverly linked up 
his uh, own just expectation of a dowry with the reputation with the reputed generosity of the count the account of his uh, last duchess could have been given to impress uh, on the envoy what the duke expected in the form of decorum and dignity from his wife finally the duke leads the envoy down the stairs to join the count's party obviously the envoy bows to the duke to precede him down the stairs to which the duke with perfect courtesy insists on walking down together the line uh, implies the presence of another person beside the speaker the duke now calls the envoy's attention to a bronze statue of neptune the sea god and uh, proudly remarks that the statue was specially made for him by claus of innsbruck the duke's artistic taste is superbly combined uh, with his pride and possession he seems as much to appreciate its uh, rarity and its artistic qualities furthermore the statue symbolizes the duke's own aristocratic and domineering nature his uh, he used to tame people instead of sea horses uh friends by this we have completed the explanation of the poetry we will take up some other topic for further discussion in our next class so till then we meet take care and prepare well thank you